Harrisburg. I attended and lived the 46th Women's Curcio Weekend at Trinity Spiritual Center. I sat and looked at the Decoria of St. Anne, and I'm happy to be with you here today uh, doing the introduction to our new uh, study material, which is Reaching Jesus, Five Steps to a Fuller Life by David Knight. Uh, actually, I'm kind of filling in for Robbie Davis. Uh, it was her task uh, to be here at the December School of Leaders to present this information, but of course we had a cancellation because of weather, uh, and she is on a trip with her husband, so I, I graciously agreed to, to fill in for her, but she sent me, she sent me her talk, so, so I'm prepared. Um, as I said, the next uh, title of our uh, lay study is going to be Reaching Jesus, Five Steps to a Fuller Life. Uh, the author, David Knight, uh, Father David Knight, I actually had an opportunity to meet him in person many years ago. He was a speaker at St. Catherine Labore for one of our missions that we had. Uh, just a very engaging person uh, and so personable and just filled with the Spirit. It was just obvious uh, how in love with Jesus uh, this man is. Um, I have just a little bit of a biography. I want you to understand who Father David Knight is before I move to his introduction. Uh, he was actually born in Dallas, Texas uh, in 1931. And after studying and working in Florida, Louisiana, Massachusetts, New York, Texas, Washington, and Lyon, France, he was ordained in 1961. He currently lives in Memphis, Tennessee, and runs his way center for spiritual growth. Uh, Father Knight teaches in the Christian Brothers University graduate program in Catholic studies in the Diocese of Memphis uh, and in the Institute for Liturgy and Spirituality. He is a retired pastor uh, of Sacred Heart Catholic Church and I'm assuming that is there in Memphis, Tennessee. After his ordination, Father Knight served as a missionary uh, to Chad for three years and his work there in Chad included providing pastoral care, uh, teaching and helping with agricultural and construction projects and basic first aid for the people there. Uh, when Father Knight returned to the United States, he did earn a doctoral uh, in doctorate in sacred theology at the Catholic University in Washington, D.C. And his doctoral dissertation, The Implications for Spiritual Theology of Karl Rainer's Theology of Renunciation, studied in the light of his concept of man, was the foundation for his book series, Cloud by Day, Fire by Night. Uh, in the years after Vatican II, he's led many workshops and retreats on vows for religious communities. In 1977, St. Anthony Messenger Press published Father David Knight's first book, Addressed to the Laity, and that is called His Way, an everyday plan for following Jesus. The laity's response to that book spawned discussion groups, parish missions, retreats, and more books, including To Follow His Way, a renewal program for parishes, small groups, and individuals. Uh, Father Knight's given talks. He's been a speaker for missions, retreats, and workshops in many different countries, including Australia, Canada, England, Ecuador, Germany, Guam, Guatemala, Haiti, Ireland, Japan, Korea, Spain, and all throughout the United States. His book, Reaching Jesus, Five Steps to a Fuller Life, written in 1998, was written in response to requests to update his first book, His Way, based on 20 years of teaching it and talking to people. If you go to, you can actually go to his website, an online website, if you type in His Way, uh, you'll come up with Father Knight's uh, uh, website, and he has actually turned his way into Immersed in Christ, A Journey in Five Steps, which is really incorporated in this book that we'll be studying in a little bit different format, but all of the information is actually online here as well. Uh, Father Knight has taught in high schools in Florida and Louisiana, and of course at the Catholic University, uh, Loyola University, Christian Brothers College, and Memphis Technology, Tech, 
theological seminary, I'm sorry, when Father Knight's not presiding at Mass, anointing the sick, visiting the imprisoned, burying the dead, writing, praying, or teaching, he enjoys reading, sleeping, eating, and driving his tractor. So I don't know where he drives his tractor in Memphis, but there must be snakes out there somewhere. <laughs> um, Reaching Jesus, the book that we'll be studying, presents five steps for us to act upon that would bring us to a fuller life in Christ. It proposes the question, doesn't everyone desire a meaningful, productive life? Do you remember thinking, what will I grow up to be? In our jobs, we sometimes think, is this really what I want to do with my life? We look back and wonder if our hard work is really worth it. Our culture and our society lead us to believe that wealth, status, and possessions are the way to find our worth and contentment. But in this book, there are five things that are listed for us that we need to do in order to enter into the experience of Jesus Christ as our Savior, our teacher, our leader, our lover, and our Lord. With the death uh, of recent death of Nelson Mandela, the civil rights slogan, keep your eyes on the prize, comes to mind. What is the real prize, the real goal that our whole life should be moved toward, but eternal life with Jesus? That should be our one priority. And with our decision to accept Jesus as our Lord, for each one of us at some point, there was one moment in our own life in which we made a decision to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as the Messiah. And actually, that one single moment was not just that one small space of time, but Father Knight says it is a reoccurring moment a decision made and persevered in a commitment because commitments are the most important acts of our lives. They give shape to our souls. And what this brings to mind, of course, is our baptism when we are reborn into Christ. Uh, we become a new being made for the purpose of glorifying and living Christ's life in this world. <coughs> The life full of happiness and contentment then is found in Jesus and in Jesus alone. Every one of us would have fullness of life if we simply use the principles, values, attitudes, and priorities that Jesus himself taught while he was here on earth. That is what Jesus told us when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because Jesus invites us to create ourselves, to shape our souls by the response that we make to his call. This is the most important commitment of our lives. And with that importance comes a requirement, an obligation, a responsibility to learn more about Jesus. <coughs> In John chapter 10, 10, he tells us, I came so that you might have life and have it to the full. He is telling us that if we live our lives in him, we will find joy and peace. The purpose of this book then is to be a guide to that end. It's to mark a path so that those who choose to follow it will know where they are will understand what steps they have already taken on the journey to him and what steps they need to take next in order to truly reach Christ. There are five basic choices that we have to make. They lead to the total gift of ourselves in love. That's our object, to totally give ourselves in love to Jesus Christ. They, Father Knight describes these choices as five choices to die, to die to self, as Jim Gaunt has just told us, that we die to self in, in order to become Christ-like and to take on his life. 
Uh, there are five graves into which we must enter in order to rise to the fullness of life. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And that's from John chapter 12, <coughs> verse 24. St. Paul reminds us of our baptism. And again, we're going back to what Jim was talking about. <coughs> our baptism was a dying and a rising <coughs> into Christ's life. Dying to anything and everything that diminishes our response to Jesus Christ on earth. Father and I outlines five choices. Choices to die to ourselves and rise to living in Christ. They're simple, they're clear, and they are specific. These choices are to be five commitments to incorporate into our everyday lives. The five commitments are to be a Christian. We're called to be Christ to the world. Discipleship. Reflecting and studying Jesus. We're called to be a prophet, to bear witness to Christ through our lives. We're called to be priests in the act of ministering of God's word to other people, our rising to lead community. And the final step is being a steward. That's being a leader. That's the Christian way. That in our life, we lead others to Christ through our words, through our actions, and through our heartfelt love for Jesus. As Christistas, we know many of these ways already. And in a general way, we're living them in the principles of Christia. This book was recommended by the National Christia Committee for School of Leaders and Special Programs. When we say, Jesus, I trust in you, we mean a total relationship with him in every aspect of our lives. When he says, come follow me, he wants not to lead us, but to walk side by side with us. And this book will show us how to shape our lives to his by responding in prayer and in action. De Cloris. De Cloris.